Hi again everyone. I have a review for you today. First review of that I've done it blah blah blah. <laughs> First review I've done in a while. Um, today I want to review the Dior Skin Forever Foundation. I picked this up a couple of weeks ago. I went in for my free makeover because I registered at the Bay and they have a Dior counter. So I went in um, looking for a foundation that is long wearing stands up to high heat and high humidity and will, um, you know, do well with touch-ups all day long and not sweat off my face. Tall order, probably, for some, um, but for me, it's what I want for the summer for my wedding, so I've tried this product out. <coughs> it's not a bad foundation. Um, I think I paid around $50 for it. It comes in a glass bottle. The glass is pretty thick, so it's quite a heavy bottle, but uh, it comes in a one ounce bottle with a pump. I like that it has a lid too, because the pump is just free twisting. It doesn't lock, so this way, if you put it in your makeup bag, it's not going to spill all over everything. Um, I'm, I use the color 10, or I wear the color 10. It has an SPF 25 and has octanoxate 4% and titanium dioxide 2.64% so you are getting a um, UVA and UVB protection with this and um, anything that ends in 8 I believe is what covers UVA and the titanium dioxide is a standard UVB protection so yeah um, it's a good foundation I don't know that it's going to be the foundation that I'm going to wear on my wedding day, and I'll tell you why in a couple minutes, but as far as an everyday foundation goes, it's nice. It's lightweight. It doesn't feel like you're wearing a whole lot on your face. With that said, it's also only about a light, maybe medium coverage. Um, I had seen a couple of reviews, and a couple of people tried to say that this is a full coverage foundation. There is no way this is full coverage, unless you have absolutely perfect flawless skin, this is not full coverage, okay? Like I say, light to medium at best, and on the light side of medium. It does not, um, it, it's not very buildable, so if you do want to build it um, after you've put on your first base, I would say stipple a little bit with your foundation brush. Stipple a little bit wherever you need the extra coverage and then blend it with your blending brush, which is what I do, and I'll blend it out a little bit with my buffer brush. Um, it's not bad. I like the way it covers. I, In a couple of the reviews I had seen also, um, one of the girls had mentioned that she found it settles in lines and wrinkles and in pores. I don't personally find that. I don't find that it settles in the little creases under my eyes, and I don't find that it settles in the pores around my nose. Actually, I find the opposite. I find that it sits nicely on top and that it almost helps to smooth out that area, unlike some of my other foundations which do settle in that spot. So for that, I think this is really great. Um, I also find that it is kind of hard to work with. It took me a couple of days to figure out the best way to put it on. The absolute most important thing is to make sure that you have moisturized your skin and used a primer. If you don't use a primer, um, what I find is that it drags when you put it on and it streaks. Uh, if you do use a primer, then it goes on much smoother, and of course that's a, that's, that's a true statement for most foundations. I mean, I'm totally a believer uh, in, in um, primers, and I don't ever put foundation on without using a primer first. So, I mean, maybe I'm biased, but that's just, for me, it's just a given. Now, um, when you do put it on, after you've obviously moisturized and primed, I like to use my Body Shop foundation brush, and I like this one specifically for that foundation. Now, I like this one for a lot of other foundations as well, but I do have a couple of other foundation brushes, and I don't find that they work as well. I'm not sure why, but um, this one is the one that I prefer. Once I've got it on, then what I do is I let it sit for about two seconds, <laughs> not very long because it dries super fast, but what I'll do is I'll take my uh, 187 from MAC and I will go over my entire face and buff it all in. Then once I've done that, I'll take a look and see if there's any areas that need a little bit of extra coverage and I'll go back and I'll do that little pat-pat motion with the brush 
and I will put it on. Um, because this is such a thin foundation, I find that I have to use quite a bit of it. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily think that's true, but where I can use two pumps of my MAC Pro Longwear, I use almost three full pumps of the uh, Dior Skin Forever. So I think that's worth noting because you're going to go through this faster. They're the same size bottle, but you're going to go through this quicker, I think. If you have sensitive skin or if you are prone to uh, scent sensitivities, I would say steer clear of this foundation and steer clear of all Dior foundations. They are very heavily scented. Um, it, depending on your preference, it's not an unpleasant smell. Um, it does smell like one of their perfumes. So I think it's the Dior... The, Sherry, maybe? Anyways, it does smell almost exactly like one of their perfumes. And if you're okay with that smell, then you're going to love it. Um, it took me a couple of days to get used to it. I couldn't, um, I don't know, I couldn't wrap my head around such a heavily scented product at first. The good thing about it is that the scent does dissipate within about an hour, so you don't really smell it after that, which is nice. Um, I do still need to use concealer when I wear this. I was told by the girl at the counter uh, initially that, oh yeah, this is great, you're not going to need a concealer or anything. Well, she put it on and she ended up using a concealer under my eyes because I do have pretty dark circles. Um, so I definitely always, 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 um, wear a concealer under my eyes of some sort, unless I'm wearing like my, uh, Vichy Dermablend and then that's such a high coverage, um, foundation that I don't really need to, but that's the only foundation that I found that I don't need to put a concealer under my eyes. Um, <clears throat> as far as long wearing, yeah, it does definitely wear a long time. It doesn't really budge once you've got it on your skin, so it's not going to, you know, rub off on things or smudge off on things or whatever, your clothing and, and stuff like that. Um, as far as holding up in heat and humidity, I haven't tried that out yet. Uh, it hasn't been hot enough here to go outside on a hot, bright, sunny day and test it out. Um, I will say that the girl at the Dior counter told me that this is an excellent foundation, super long wearing, and you can wear it to the gym. So I tried it. Disagree. Like most foundations and like most um, makeup, it sweats off. And I mean, probably if you're not like drenched out because you're doing a full on cardio and weight workout, then it's going to be fine. But if you're doing anything high, you know, intensity and you're sweating a lot, this is not going to work for you. And I really don't think any foundation is going to hold up to that claim. So for a little bit of, you know, light. Um, glow that you might get on your skin just because you've been standing outside on a warm day, I think it'll be fine. Um, <laughs> it's very laughable that, you know, they would claim that you can go to the gym in it. I tried it. It doesn't work unless my sweat is way different from anybody else's, which probably not. So, um, overall, not a bad, bad foundation. Uh, I'm not sure that I'll repurchase it. Uh, I'm going to try it out definitely a little bit more and, and um, try it out in different situations. Like, I can't wait for it to pour rain because I'm going to go outside with a full face of makeup on and stand underneath, obviously at the end of my work day, but <laughs> stand underneath it. I guess I could try it out in the shower, but showers are generally warm and outside isn't, and they're a different consistency and texture and, and everything, so I want to do it in the rain, okay? <laughs> um, I may end up doing an update to this review. Overall, it's a good foundation. Like I said, there are some challenges with it, and there's definitely some people that I wouldn't recommend to try it. Uh, if you have extremely, extremely, extremely dry skin, um, wait until a time of year that it's not so dry. I definitely wouldn't wear this in the wintertime. My face is just way too dry and flaky for that. I need a way more moisturizing foundation. Um, but overall, it's not bad. I mean, like I say, I don't know if it's the one that I'll wear on my wedding day just because of some of the negatives that I have seen with it. I want to try other products first and find the one that I like the best. You know, but um, yeah, it it's not a bad foundation. So 
Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope it was helpful. And if you want to see any more reviews, let me know. And in the meantime, have a great day and keep smiling. Bye.